Hello everyone and welcome in the lecture series of control system. So in the last lecture we discuss poles and zeros of a control system. In this lecture we will be talking about poles in detail. In this lecture we will study the types of poles and zeros. We have simple poles, simple zeros, complex pole, complex zeros and the poles which coincide. We will discuss everything in detail with examples. So let us start the first point the types of poles and zeros. We have simple pole and simple zeros. Then we have multiple pole and multiple zeros. Now let us discuss the first type which is simple pole and simple zero. So in simple definition it says non-coinciding poles or zeros are called simple poles or simple zeros. Here non-coinciding means which does not occur at the same time or which are non-repetitive. So the poles or zeros which are non-repetitive or which do not occur at same time are called simple poles and simple zeros. Now let us see an example of this type. Now I have a transfer function t of s and it is given by s plus 2 upon s plus 3 into s plus 4. We have to plot the poles and zeros on the s plane. So first let us find the zeros in the transfer function. We know the roots of numerators are the zeros of the transfer function. So if you put s plus 2 is equals to 0, you will get the 0 at s is equals to minus 2. Similarly, the roots of the numerators are the poles of the transfer function. So if you put s plus 3 is equals to 0, you will get a pole s is equals to 3. And if you put s plus 4 is equals to 0, you will get s is equals to minus 4. So in the last lecture, we have already discussed how to find the poles and zeros. If you have not seen the lecture, you can see the link in the i button. Now we have to plot this on s plane. We know s plane is sigma plus j omega where sigma represents the real part and j omega represents the imaginary part. Now first let us plot the zero. We have a zero at s is equals to minus two. We have to draw a small circle or a small zero and it denotes there is a zero on that point. So we have a zero at s is equals to minus two. Then we have a pole at s is equals to minus three. We represent the pole with a cross sign and we have one more pole at s is equals to minus four. So you can see the poles do not occur on the same time, hence they are not repetitive poles. So we can say these are non-coinciding poles, hence these are called simple poles and simple zeros. Now let us discuss about multiple poles and multiple zeros. Now consider a transfer function t of s in the form of numerator polynomial upon a denominator polynomial. We have s minus s1 into s minus s2 so on till s minus sn upon s minus sa into s minus sb so on till s minus sm. We know the roots of the numerators are the zeros. So the zeros will be s is equals to plus s1. Then we have s is equals to plus s2 and so on till s is equals to sn. So these are the zeros of the transfer function. Similarly, the roots of the denominator represents the poles of a transfer function. So if you put s minus sa is equals to 0, you will get the pole 
S is equals to plus S A. Similarly, we have coal S is equals to S B. So on till S is equals to S M. So these are the poles and zeros of the given transfer function. Now the poles S A, S B till S M or the zeros S1, S2 till S N are either real or complex. And the complex pole or zeros will always appear in conjugate pairs. So this simply means the poles or the zeros can be either real or it can be complex. And if there are complex poles or complex zeros, it will always appear in the conjugate pair. Now we will discuss what do you mean by this conjugate pair. Also, it is possible that either poles or zeros may coincide. Such poles and zeros are called multiple poles or multiple zeros. Now if the poles or the zeros occur at the same time or if they are repetitive, then we can say these are called multiple poles or multiple zeros. Now let us discuss them with an example. Now I have a transfer function P of S. It is given by 1 upon S plus A whole square. We have to plot the poles and zeros on the S plane. Now as you can see, there are no roots in the numerator. Hence there are no zeros. And if you put S plus A whole bracket square is equals to 0, you will get one pole S is equals to minus A and the second pole again at S is equals to minus A. So we have repetitive poles or the poles which occur at the same time. Now we have to plot this on the S plane. So first pole is at minus A, S1 pole. The first pole is at minus A and again we have one more pole on the same location and it is also on minus A. So these are called multiple poles or multiple zeros. You can say these are repeated multiple poles on a real axis. Now let us see an example of complex poles and zeros. I have a transfer function P of S and it is given as s plus 4 upon s plus 2 into s plus 1 plus 3j and s minus 1 minus 3j. So the zeros will be s is equals to minus 4. If you put s plus 4 is equals to 0, you will get s is equals to minus 4. Then we have pole. We have three poles. Our first pole is s plus 2 is equals to 0. So you will get first pole at s is equals to minus 2. Similarly, if you put s plus 1 plus 3j is equals to 0, then we will get pole at minus 1 minus 3j. And the last pole, the third pole will be at minus 1 plus 3j. So the pole number second and pole number third are complex poles and we have studied the complex pole will be always in conjugate pair. So these are the conjugate pair. We can have some more examples of conjugate pair. You can say S is equals to 2 plus minus 5J. This is an example of conjugate pair. We can write S is equals to 4 plus minus 2J. These are all examples of conjugate pair. Now let us plot the poles and zeros on the S plane. First we have a 0 at S is equals to minus 4. So the minus 4 will be on left hand side of S plane. Then we have a pole at S is equals to minus 2. So I have denoted the pole with a cross sign and it is at minus 2. Now let us see how to plot this complex pole. Now the real part of the complex pole is at minus 1 in the both poles. So I have to plot minus 1 point. So I have plotted this minus 1 point. 
then we have to plot plus 3j value and minus 3j value since it has j term it will be plotted on the imaginary axis so my plus 3j will be here and my minus 3j will be here now the value is minus 1 plus 3j and minus 1 minus 3j so i can draw a line from minus 1 plus 3j and minus 1 minus 3j and the pole will be here this pole will be minus 1 plus 3j and the second pole will be minus 1 minus 3j so this is the way to plot the complex poles on the s plane so in this session we have studied the simple poles and zeros then we studied the poles which are repetitive which are called multiple poles and the third point we studied is complex poles and zeros now i hope you have a good idea about the types of poles and zeros so in the next lecture we will study the significance of poles in a control system this is a very very important lecture if you understand this lecture you will have a good command in control system so i request you to please watch this lecture in detail and also prepare your notes from the lecture 